Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today we'll be watching an action movie named Sweet Girl, to which I can guarantee you'll be shocked by the ending. Enjoy the recap. The movie kicks off to a drone shot of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We see police helicopters and cars, as well as FBI agents flying, driving and running manically, with background sound seeming to try and obtain a visual on our main man Ray Cooper. He is seen talking to an FBI agent who is visibly distressed and trying to get him to cooperate with her orders, but instead he proceeds to jump off a building into the water below him. Years earlier, our movie flashes back to a scene in a forest where Ray Cooper and his family are seen enjoying some family time. Following this scene, we are met with Ray and his family at the emergency ward of a hospital, where his wife, Amanda Cooper, is told her cancer has come back, with little options to fight the terminal illness. Ray is then seen being approached by the doctor, who communicates to him that there is a treatment option available for his wife, which is in the last stages of approval by the FDA, serving as the only curative option for her condition. Amanda's doctor, Mr. Wu, who was supposed to deliver her the treatment communicates to Ray that the manufacturer of the drug, Bioprime, pulled it off the market for patient use indefinitely, meaning Amanda's condition will continue to deteriorate. Following Ray being informed of the bad news, we are introduced to the CEO of Bioprime, Simon Keeley, on a news talk show speaking with Diana Morgan, a U.S. congresswoman who is taking a stand against Bioprime as a result of their business practices. They argue with one another regarding the cost of medication, where Ray Cooper chimes in as a caller and tells him his wife is dying because he pulled the drug sparrow off the market. Ray tells him he has done everything to be able to afford the drug, telling Mr. Keeley if his wife dies that he would have signed his own death sentence. Ray and his daughter Rachel enjoy their final moments together with Amanda. As she breathes her final breaths, Ray paces up and down the hospital corridors, wailing and sobbing in pain and anguish, whilst his daughter sings her favorite song that she used to sing to her as a child. Six months later, while going about through his normal routine, Ray receives a phone call from a journalist, Martin Bennett. He informs Ray he can acquire justice for him. He tells him that Simon Keeley has committed indictable offenses and that they can land him in jail if he can see Ray. Ray goes to their meetup point, but Martin gives him instructions about which trains to go on and which station to leave. He further instructs him to follow a man wearing a denim jacket and reiterates he cannot lose him. It happens that Martin Bennett is the man wearing the denim jacket. He continues instructing him to go to a different platform and make his way to a specific train station. During all of this, Ray's daughter is seen to be following them in secret. Martin tells Ray the information he has, telling him that Bioprime has been bribing offshore companies, all linked to Simon Keeley. While this is happening, a man wearing a cap approaches and stabs Martin Bennett in the stomach. Ray's daughter reveals herself as Ray and the unknown perpetrator throw hands with each other. Ray disarms him with the help of his daughter and lays into him. As his daughter is injured and he attempts to help her, the man comes from behind and stabs him swiftly in the stomach, then proceeds to kick him out of the glass window and onto the platform where his daughter is lying beside him. 24 months later, Rachel decides to take on the same training as her dad. She grapples and makes sure she's combat ready in case of another fight breaking out. Elsewhere, we see Congresswoman Diana Morgan, alongside Simon Keeley, announcing a bill that is being passed to deliver medication to the public at affordable prices, alluding to the idea that Mr. Keeley and his company Bioprime have been collaborating illegally with the government for their own financial and political gain. As this scene plays on the TV, Ray tells his daughter he is still plotting to take down Mr. Keeley and find the man who tried to end his life. Our scene cuts, and we see Mr. Keeley exiting a car into a venue, and Ray entering the same facility from a side door with a cap on to hide his identity. He then steals a suit from the back of the facility and changes into it in order to enter the event without being noticed. During the event, Mr. Keeley is giving a speech, and afterwards Ray walks over to him and spills what appears to be a cup of whiskey on his pants, as Keeley walks to the bathroom with his security detail to clean himself up. Ray incapacitates the security and puts Keeley against the wall with a knife to his throat, informing him of who he is. He questions him about Martin Bennett's death and the authorization of bribes. Keeley tells Ray that Vinod Shah is the one behind this, also telling him he has no idea what he is getting. Simultaneously, Ray is attacked from behind by one of the guards. He grabs the knife and slices him in the arm and as he fights Mr. Keeley over a gun, he accidentally shoots one of his security detail in the head. As Keeley continues to struggle in an attempt to get away, Ray grabs him, 
and in a drastic scene ends the man's life. Rin makes his way back home where he yells at his daughter to go pack their things. Back at the scene, one of Keeley's security guards known as Mr. Ashbury is being questioned by FBI agent Sarah Meeker. Mr. Ashbury communicates to them that he said whoever it was that killed Mr. Keeley had made a death threat to him in the past. The FBI identifies Ray as the man who made the death threat to Mr. Keeley, having their eyes peeled for any signs of him or his vehicle. Rachel makes a phone call from a payphone to FBI agent Sarah Meeker, telling her that Mr. Keeley's death was an accident. As she tries to disprove the FBI's narrative that her father murdered Mr. Keeley, Sarah attempts to instruct her to buy a burner phone and call her on a number, but Rachel ends in her face and makes her way into the motel. As Ray catches up on sleep in the motel, we see operatives sneakily approach and enter the building. As they open the door, Ray is awakened by the bell attached to it. He quickly wakes up his daughter and exits the building, walking straight past a completely unaware operative holding what appears to be a SMG. As the agent approaches the staircase, Ray smacks the door into his face and kicks him down the stairs. As the fight escalates, some shots are misfired and Ray gets the better of his opponent, tying a belt around him and jumping off the staircase. As Ray continues moving through the building, he engages with another operative, slamming him into a wall and driving a screwdriver into him. He then jumps out of the building through a window, where their fight over the operative's gun results in Ray coming out on top once again and shooting him clean in the neck. After this, we are met with the FBI raiding his house, where Agent Sarah, whilst looking at a family photo of the Coopers, is called in by her associate, who confirms with her that Ray is definitely their suspect. The FBI then receives intel that his vehicle was seen leaving a motel 70 miles from his home where a double homicide took place, alluding to the idea that the operatives Ray was met with were not FBI agents, but rather associates of Bioprime seeking retribution for their deceased boss Simon Keeley. We then are met with the man who looks like the one which murdered journalist Martin Bennett, looking at options of cars to buy. After the store owner offers to help him, he is seen wiping blood off his blade onto what was the store owner's jacket. He follows through by stealing a car and driving off. Ray and his daughter find a place of refuge in a forest filled with snow. Ray then walks down the road and creates a specific route a car must take going through there. As Ray prepares himself for more combatants who are out to end his life, Rachel calls up Detective Sarah and tells her that people are after them. On the phone call, Rachel tells the detective about her relationship with her mother and Sarah informs her she has the ability to control her father, and her mother would be proud of her if she did. In the meantime, Santos, the killer's name being revealed to us as he creates an explosive shotgun, Ray and his daughter leave the forest and approach the mansion of Vinod Shah, the man who supposedly put Simon Keeley up to taking Sparrow off the market. They also see a car lurking in the shadows as well. He leaves the home alongside an entourage of Chevrolet SUVs. Ray has completely blocked their path, and as they are stopped, he rams into one of their cars with an excavator. Santos then comes from the other side and fires his explosive shotgun into the front SUV, setting it ablaze. Vinod then retreats but is caught by Ray. He places a gun to his head, interrogating him as to why he killed Martin. Before he can speak, Santos fires a shot and kills Vinod. Ray runs off and he and his daughter get into their car as Santos fires three shots at them, however they manage to escape. Rachel tells her father that the man who killed Vinod was also the man who killed Martin, confused as to why. Her dad then switches vehicles to lay low for a bit. But that doesn't work out, as Ray is driving, he spots the man who killed Vinod in a diner. And as you'd expect, he walks in and takes a seat next to him in the diner. The man informs Ray, he was not hired by Vinod, but rather he was hired by his employer to take out anybody who may implicate them in corruption. Ray gives the man three options. Either he gets the both of them in trouble with the FBI, or Santos can go into hiding, or that he will find the man's employer and when he does, he'll take them out. Santos discloses to Ray that his employer is Diana Morgan, our congresswoman who was initially against Bioprime, but sided with them after some obviously corrupt dealings, hiring Santos to take out Ray, as he will implicate her in misconduct and corruption as a senator. Ray and Rachel make their way back towards the city. Though, the FBI locate their vehicle and are in hot pursuit. The police helicopter orders Ray to stop the vehicle. However, he decides to turn the roads of the city into a racetrack. But his vehicle is cut off by traffic. As the FBI has them locked in, they abandon their cars and pursue them on foot, only to be met with an empty vehicle. Ray continues to run through a crowd of people attending an NFL game with FBI agents hot on his tail. 
he makes his way into the stadium and towards the roof. The helicopter hovers above him with lights pointed directly at him, and the FBI agents approach him carefully. Agent Sarah then pours her heart out to Ray, telling him what happened to him was not fair. Ray then has flashbacks, and we come to realize that all the carnage caused as a result of his wife's death was not by him, but instead his daughter Rachel, who was stuck in a trance as both her mother and father died. In the ambulance, Rachel turns on the FBI agents who are only trying to help her, kicking one as she lies on the stretcher and elbowing the next as she gets up and rips her neck brace off. She then makes her way to the front of the ambulance and attempts to run the ambulance off the road, causing it to flip onto its side, eventually allowing her to escape. Rachel is then seen lying down on a bench. As she sings the song her mother used to sing her as a child, we see her father, whose lap she is lying in. She pours her heart out to him and tells him she is not crazy and that she just wants to stop the people who did this to him and her mother. Our scene cuts to Diana Morgan at a press conference, telling her supporters that she is going to clean out the rot caused by business culture being mixed with politics. We see Rachel in the back of the conference, as well as the man who killed her father and was attempting to kill her. Our scene cuts again to Rachel exiting a yellow taxi and making her way up some scaffold and then into a building where Diana Morgan is having an after-party, following her press conference. Rachel scans a key card and enters Diana Morgan's office, where she is met by Santos. He attempts to stab her from behind but in his preceding attack, he kicks her out of the window and back onto the scaffold she climbed earlier. Santos then fires a few shots as she finds cover behind some crates. But as Santos searches for her, she sneakily disarms him using her jacket and is thrown in a pool alongside him. The man unsheathes a knife as does Rachel, and they engage in combat. He slices her forearm in the battle and is seen to be absolutely pummeling her. He strangles her underneath the water, and she is seen to be breathing what should be her last breath. However, her father's voice emanates in her head, telling her to get up, and in a fight for her life, she does just that. Turning the tables, she grabs the man's knife and uses it on him repeatedly in the stomach, causing him to be lifeless in the pool of water which turns to red. Rachel, who by some miracle is still alive, makes her way back to Diana's office. She tells her she is going to call the FBI and inform them about her dealings with Bioprime. As Diana attempts to manipulate Rachel, she kicks her in the stomach and brings up how she saw Diana on CNN when her mum was dying in the hospital. Diana tells Rachel she can still help her by using her connections to drop the charges the FBI are going to press against her. Rachel asks her if all the corruption was worth it as she presses a knife to her throat, then leaving her, traumatizing her from the incident and having her calling for security. We then see the FBI agents receive information that Rachel was seen at Diana Morgan's campaign rally. This leaves them baffled as to why Rachel would target a congresswoman. They then figure out, after Rachel sends them the recording of her interaction with Diana, that she was a part of the corrupt dealings with Bioprime to try and win the election. While this is happening, we see Rachel fleeing the country on a plane with her father in the background, quoting that the past is like a dream, a mosaic of images and feelings that offer some truth about how we got here. Thanks for watching. I'm very close to hitting 100,000 subscribers and I would greatly appreciate your support. Until the next one.